Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about Cthulhu, just talking about his lore, his story, the myths surrounding him, and all of that good stuff. So his name isn't supposed to be pronounced by the human tongue, so technically, no matter how you say his name, you're not going to be able to say it, right? So I'm just going to go with Cthulhu, because that's the normal way most people say it, so... The Elsa gods generally operate in deep space, beyond the solar system, although some live on the Earth itself. Yorxafoth is one of them, an omniscient mass of orbs and eyes and tentacles. In other words, he can know and see all of space and time at once. No secret is hidden from Yorxafoth. With Shub Niggurath, a mass of mouths, black tentacles, and goat legs, they birthed Nug and Yeb. Some say that Nug and Yeb were once one, a being called Zazuluth, another outer god split into masculine and feminine aspects, Nug and Yep. Nug is the parent of Cthulhu, who was born in Zula, in the 23rd nebula. He went to the star Zoth, where he made his babies, and with them he went to Saturn, and then Earth. So, you know, quite the travelly guy. They arrived in the Pacific Ocean and built Rylea, the famous city. At this time, there was a lot more water on the Earth, and way less people, and by way less people I mean none, because we just weren't around yet. And he and his minions, the horrific deep ones, flourish. The elder things, who were inhabiting the Earth before that, didn't exactly like the fact that Cthulhu came along and just made all of this claim to the territory, and the two factions warred against each other, across the whole planet. Soon, though, they brokered a truce with one another, and Cthulhu went into a deep slumber in Rylea, and humanity came about after that. Perhaps this was thanks to the stars falling out of favour, but Cthulhu kept in contact with us with many dreams and birthing the cult of Cthulhu. Tragedy hit Rylea at some point, though, and it sank into the ocean. The city has reappeared every now and then throughout history. Ultimately, when it will return permanently, that will spell a lot of doom and bad stuff for us. See, since men came about, Cthulhu and his kin have guided us through dreams and visions. In fact, he spoke to this one guy, Mad Arab Abdul Abdhalur. I just can't say that name, so you're just going to have to bear with that, but he essentially guided him in creating the Necronomicon. It's a book that's made out of human flesh, or at least the outside of it is covered in human flesh, and the pages are made out of human skin, and the words, the ink, is actually blood, so the whole book is written in blood. Now, the book details numerous different bloody rituals needed to awaken the Great Old Ones, sparing no graphic detail. And one of the most famous lines reads, That is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange aeon, even death may die. When mankind descends into madness and chaos, their exploits will awaken Cthulhu at one point, and he'll just bring an end to everything on mankind, you know, the Earth, essentially. It's like a doomsday scenario for us, like um, the apocalypse, or um, the worst case scenario is something else. But with a giant alien squid monster guy that's very, very scary and terrifying. Of course, Cthulhu slumbers with the horrific Deep Ones, but he also has divine servants such as Dagon and Hydra, who may be large Deep Ones, and also his Star Spawn, or the Cthulhu. Essentially, they look like miniature versions of Cthulhu himself, and he also had a consort, Idia, bearing him three boys, Gatanoholo, Yithor Gatha, and Zoth Omog. Remember, guys, I'm not supposed to be able to pronounce this with this tongue, so yeah, haha. <laughs> and a girl, Cythilia. Now, Cythilia was his favourite and most important child, because Cythilia has the power to birth a second Cthulhu into existence should something happen to Cthulhu himself, i.e. his regenerative powers fail him. So, yeah, she's pretty damn important, and she's guarded by Cthulhu's best, most scary monsters and his most trusted deep ones. So, yeah. So yeah, he doesn't want anyone playing with Cephilia. But Cthulhu himself, of course, is an old great one. A group of beings that have been around, well, since way before we can even comprehend. From what we know, Cthulhu himself is genderless, but there have been hints to him, of course, being male. Cthulhu's power is supposed to be uncomprehendable, and considering that Cthulhu himself isn't even at the highest peaks of, you know, his pantheon, his religion, like, literally, he's a high priest that worships even higher beings. So, that's pretty crazy to consider. And, you know, he, he can do things like, just by looking at Cthulhu, a person can be driven to madness. If he's split or damaged in some way, he can reform himself, which is also kind of crazy to think. So, yeah, you wouldn't be able to bomb Cthulhu or nuke him out of existence if he was to awaken and then, you know, do his thing. So, 
Now, naturally, because the Cthulhu mythos has entered the public domain and a bunch of different writers have sort of continued H.P. Lovecraft's work. In fact, H.P. Lovecraft himself even encouraged people to, to do that, to sort of adapt and continue his works. And Neil Gaiman, of course, took his stab at this. And in one of his stories, Cthulhu is recalling a time to Watley, someone he's telling his memoirs to. And so he's talking about this ship that's sailing the sea. And on the ship, there are, of course, passengers and a magician that's sort of a conjurer that's entertaining them. And the magician's showing off the passenger a bunch of different tricks, right? But there's this parrot, and the parrot knows all of the magician's secrets, so he's telling everyone how everything's done. Well, after a while, the magician gets a little sick of this, right? So he rolls up his sleeves, waves his arms a little, and the ship begins to buck and capsize to one side, and Rylea decides to rise from the sea, and an army of Cthulhu's minions, fishmen, gather around the deck and take the passengers down to the depths. Then Rylea returns to the depths of the sea, and the magician miraculously survives as well. The parrot then, of course, asks him how he does it, but this sort of shows off how dangerous potentially Cthulhu could be, because no doubt Cthulhu could easily, like, summon the city from the depths of the waters if he wanted to, and have, like, just a, an army summoned right there, which also seems like a good point to sort of just uh, go over some of Cthulhu's powers, just as, like, a, a, a recap sort of thing, I guess you could say. But in essence, he's more or less immortal, has, like, an eternal life, I mean, and is more or less unkillable as well. And even if you were somehow able to end his life, then, of course, he's got his backup and his daughter. He's got the ability to cause madness to anyone who just merely looks at him, so they go crazy and do all sorts of different things. Uh, he has the ability to revive his followers. He is massive in size, right? He's so tall that he can even, like, peek over mountains while standing on the ocean floor. He has dragon wings and may or may not be able to fly with them, a massive octopus head, which of course is protruding a bunch of tentacles, so, you know, extra potential grips and different things you can do with tentacles, right? He's got claws on his hands. He's got a really powerful regenerative ability that would activate even whilst he's taking damage in and of itself. He has the ability to devour countless suns and souls. He can shapeshift. He has mastery and knowledge of pretty much every spell you could possibly imagine. He can summon Azathoth, a god so powerful that he created existence as part of his dream and isn't even aware of it. Of course, he is a blind idiot god, but way stronger than Cthulhu. And his power is above a lot of the great old ones as well. So in summary, you don't mess with Cthulhu. He's very powerful, very deadly, but as a character in a game... There's so much possibility, it's insane. And you've got the added tidbit of having the freedom of, because he's, of course, in the public domain, you can do even more with his character and have so many abilities and so many different things he could potentially fit into. So Cthulhu definitely is an interesting person to have in a, in a game, for sure. And with so many potential things that he could potentially be given as a playable character, well... If he really is the character that's going to be teased naturally released into the game, well, y'all are in for a treat. But let me know in the comments if you're, of course, excited for Cthulhu, and tell me what you thought of the video as well. Is there anything I, I didn't potentially cover that you want me to talk about as well? Are you hyped for potentially Cthulhu coming into the game? And, of course, guys, thank you so much for getting this far as well. And, of course, guys, if you want to see more content as well, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm posting content on a fairly regular basis now, so I'm good for it. And, and without any further ado, have a good day as well.